Live Radio. Hello there, folks, and thank you for listening to the show. I'm Joanna. I'm Nate, and this is Stranger Than. Well, you may or may have not noticed that we just sort of took July. Yeah, we took July off. We did. I had and, some vacation. Uh, my son was visiting. Uh, Nate's had some grown-up things to do. Yeah, my girlfriend's trying to sell her house, which is the house I live in, so it's our house, and that's not as much fun as it sounds like. No, that it's the actual worst. I mean, I yeah. just buying a house for me was, and moving to it was super duper stressful. So I can't imagine trying to actually sell the house and also do the house buying process as well. I'm I'm just going to live in the house that I have now until I fucking die because until you die and whatever cats you have eat you. Yes, exactly. Exactly, cuz I I would not want to do that at all well fortunately when selling the house you don't really do personally a whole lot of work except that you have to keep your house clean and you have to like pack all of your fucking shit up and put them in boxes someplace Mm -hmm. and i guess fancy people can just like move to a new house and then sell the old house or like can afford to pay for things like storage which we can't so we just have a room full of fucking boxes and like none of our shit out i mean some of our shit out but not a lot of our shit out. Just the necessities. Pretty much. And so, you know, once... Yeah, it's it's still not overly fun, but your real estate agent is the person doing most of the work. They have to do all the fucking writing of shit up and... Right. Facilitating of things. Well, um, there's yeah. a reason that they get that commission, so, you know. That's right. Well, they also don't get that paid hourly, so... <laughs> you know, I can see. And, and it's something I actually did not know, uh, which I did. I, I learned because my real estate agent is also someone that I've known for a couple decades. Uh, he was like, yeah, he I mean, they pay for basically all of the shit that puts your house on the market. So they pay the, for the pictures, uh, which is you know, hundreds of dollars. Mm-hmm. They pay for listing costs, you know, all that kind of stuff. They're just paying out of their pocket. And so wow. if, like, your house doesn't sell or whatever, then they're just out this money. Because, like, we didn't, I mean, we're doing this all above board and, like, he's getting his full commission and all that stuff. We're not like, oh, well, no, but we're friends and none of that. Uh, so if we just couldn't do it, then he would just he'd just be out the money. We didn't sign a contract mm-hmm. that said we we're going to pay it back or anything. So he'd just be out that cash. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but if, like, I put hundreds of dollars into something that just didn't pan out, especially if it was approaching a thousand bucks, I'd be like, well, that's fucked up. Like I would be, that'd be, that'd be a setback. Yeah, that would be. I mean, on the plus side, I mean, for you, plus for you is like, uh, you know, obviously now they're really motivated to get this house sold for you. Yeah, that's definitely true. Definitely true. But yeah, stressful. Not a lot of fun. No, I can't imagine. It would be better. It would be. If the house was something so, so our house is like a fixer upper. Mm hmm. And so, you know, if we, if you have something that people actually want, then your house sells quick. Right. But if it's got to, like, if it needs to hit like a certain demographic, demographic of person, then it doesn't, doesn't go so quick. Yes. But hey, you know what? Could be a hell of a lot worse. Yeah. It could be. It could be. But, you know, I wish you luck. I wish you luck in this um, journey of stress. And <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Becoming a landowner. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'll be cool in the end when you finally have a home of your own. Yes. And, yeah, for, for you and the girlfriend. Yes. That'll be an awesome time. So, but, yeah, it's, it's difficult. The getting stressful. there is rough, but it, it could be worse. It, it could is. definitely be worse. It's rough. It's tiring. It's time consuming. Indeed. Lots of lots of like just stupid hoops to jump through. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be doing any of that for like a really long time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and ever. with help, with help, I certainly uh, would be rough to do it on my own. So what do you have for us today, Joanna? Well, 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 
you know, I have not been trying to sell my house, but yeah, been did a little vacationing, had my son here, been busy doing my job and an additional job. So I was going to do one topic, which I'm going to just like kind of back burner for a bit until I can maybe make a few episodes out of it, just because it ended up being a little bit more, you know, multifaceted than initially um, I had thought. More like an ogre than you thought. Yes. So I am just going to talk a little bit about this, like this recent, like, oversight committee on like the ufos or the uaps or whatever the fuck yeah people want to call them <laughs> the, uh the yeah thing that they're just like hey we found all this shit and people are like we don't care look at all this other fucking crazy shit going on and they're like no but aliens guys and they're right like, I don't right care. yeah i mean they tried this during the pandemic and <laughs> And now and apparently no times are attention. crazy enough again. It's like, hey, let's let's talk about this again and again. Like you know, just say all these things, and and everyone's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. But I thought you know maybe for for those that didn't like watch it or or whatever, you know, just just little little summarization of uh, what was actually discussed. So yeah, that's what I got. And, and uh, you know, in keeping with. Uh, you know, weird times. It, I can't get the, like the otter episode out of my head whenever I, I read this. Remember the the otter episode from South Park where it's like the future and like the otters rule the world. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I mean that hasn't. I mean, I don't know for a fact that they haven't gotten the ball rolling on it, but there have been some recent um, otter attacks, which I found I've, to be. I've I've actually seen something about that. Yeah, so yeah. I I have a, an article that touches on that subject as well. It sounds like it's otter time, really. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, the I'm time gonna talk of the about, otters. Um, I'm going to talk about swords and pirates, basically. Okay. I know, you know, Pensacola pretty... really reminded me of Pir Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, like it's got oh, like you know, I'm sure, it did. We went to like a piano bar. They had like a dueling piano bar. It was the first bar I got to go to with my son, which was super cool. And it was like in this totally oh, like, old timey now, yeah. saloon type place. And you walk out, and it's dark, and they got all these like street lights that look all old. And like, there's a lot of old buildings in Pensacola. So, um, yeah, it really, you know, had like a, a Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, uh, ambiance going on. It was pretty cool. I, I enjoyed it. I didn't think that that part of Florida was as cool as it actually is. And best beaches ever, like hands down. Nice. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it. That so do you want to start with some swords and pirates? or uh, I'll start with swords. Okay. Let's start with a sword. I've got an article about a sword. It's from Comonews.com. It, uh, it was released on Monday, June 19th, 2023. German archaeologists found a bronze sword made more than 3,000 years ago while excavating in Norlingden. The sword believed to date back to the end of the 14th century B.C., was so well-preserved it almost still shines, according to Bavaria's State Office for the Preservation of Historical Monuments. The Bavarian office said the sword was discovered in a grave where three people, a man, a woman, and a boy, were buried with rich bronze goods. It is not clear whether the three were related to each other. The sword and the burial still needs to be examined so that our archaeologists can categorize this find more precisely, but we can already say that the state of the preservation is extraordinary. A find like this is very rare, said the head of office, Matthias File. The office added, It is unusual to find swords from the period, but they have been discovered in burial mounds that were opened in the 19th century or as individual finds. And the sword is uh, pretty cool looking. It's amazing that it's like it's in like almost perfect condition. There's no rust on it. As usual, there's going to be a link uh, to my sources in the show notes, so you'll be able to see it. But it's uh, it's wild. It looks like it's it's kind of like greenish, like the handle and the blade itself has kind of this like greenish tinge. I don't know. Eh, maybe not so much. It looks a little tarnished, but nevertheless. It's, Nevertheless, uh, uh, that's pretty awesome. It's pretty, pretty awesome find. Wild. 
I like our archaeology guys. So, so do uh, I. I always want to be an archaeologist. I'd still love to be one someday. All you need is a hat and a whip. That's right. <laughs> And this other story I have is, uh, well, it's old, frankly. <laughs> it's from 2015. Oh, so wow. This, that's... This, is, this is old news. This you know, was a different world in 2015. We were different I, people in 2015. I absolutely hate that 2015 was like eight years ago. It seems like 2015 should have been like two years ago. Less than that. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what it is. Uh, so this is from BBC.com. Pirate Captain Kidd's treasure found in Madagascar. Underwater explorers in Madagas Madagascar say they have discovered treasure belonging to the notorious 17th century Scottish pirate William Kidd. A 50 kilogram silver bar was found to was brought to shore on Thursday, whatever Thursday this was back in 2015 on the island of St. Marie, from what is thought to be the wreck of the Adventure Galley. The bar was presented to Madagascar's president at a special ceremony. U.S. explorer Barry Clifford says he believes that there are more, that are many more such bars still in the wreck. Captain Kidd was appointed by the British authorities to tackle piracy, but later <laughs> became a ruthless criminal and was executed in 1701. Skepticism. Captain, Captain Kidd's treasure is the stuff of legends. People have been looking for it for 300 years. To literally have it hit me on the head, I thought, what the heck just happened to me? I really didn't expect this, Mr. Clifford said. There's more down there. I know the whole bottom of the cavity where I found the silver bar is filled with metal. It's too murky down there to see what metal, but my metal detector tells me there is metal on all sides. The BBC's Martin Vogel tweets that there is much excitement in Madagascar about the discovery, and Mr. Clifford's team has no doubt that the discovery is genuine. The it's team believes the bonafide. bar bona fide. The team believes the bar, marked with what appears to be a letter S and a letter T, has its origins in 17th century Bolivia. It believes the ship it has found was built in England. However, there is bound to be skepticism and calls for more evidence that the bar was linked to Captain Kidd, a reporter says. One option would be to take samples of wood from the ship to analyze, he says. The location of the ship, thought to have sunk in 1698, was, has been known about for many years, but the silver bar was only discovered earlier this week in 2015. Mr. Clifford said that while dr diving in this wreck, his metal detector picked up signals, but it was too muddy to see anything. UK ambassador to Madagascar, Timothy Smart, who may or may not still be that guy, who attended the ceremony, said he hoped that Mr. Clifford's latest discovery would raise Madagascar's pro profile as a tourist destination. They plan the plan is to exhibit the bars in a museum. So who was Captain Kidd? He was thought to have been born in Scotland's Greenock or the Dundee area. It's probably Greenock. Scotland's Greenock or the Dundee area in about 1645. He was appointed by the crown to tackle piracy and capture enemy French ships, but turned to piracy himself. He probably saw all the cash the pirates had and were like, this yeah, is a like, really good I gig. I want some of that. I want in on some of that action. Yeah, seriously. Uh, in 1698, he looted the Armenian ship, the Quaydog Merchant, which was apparently sailing under a French pass. The ship had been carrying satins, muslins, gold, and silver. Unfortunately for Kidd, the captain of the ship was an Englishman, and it is thought that a large amount of the cargo belonged to the British East India Company. Captain Kidd was captured and brought back to London. He was found guilty of piracy and the murder of one of his crewmen during a row in a row, I think a fight, in yeah. 1697, and sentenced to death. During his execution in, in Wapping in 1701, the first rope put around his neck broke. So he was strung up a second time. That rope also snapped. What the fuck? But then the third one worked. Third time's a charm. I fucking guess so. And not, not for Captain fucking Kidd, no. is it? Afterwards, his body was dipped in tar 
and hung by chains along the River Thames to serve as a warning to would-be pirates. Legend had it that Captain Kidd had much of his loot, which ha hid much of his loot, which has prompted numerous treasure hunts around the world and inspired author Robert Louis Stevenson when writing Treasure Island. So yeah, I, I'm not sure if they found more after that or not, but uh, maybe old silver. Maybe so. <laughs> it would be something to actually uncover, you know, like the treasure treasure. I think it's funny that he just turned to piracy himself. You think that he could just like skim a little off the top, off the th cap at the ships that he got and still like not be at odds with the British crown. Right. But I mean, it was probably like when you're talking about like like gold and like goods and, and stuff like that, it's probably like harder to like skim off the top than, you know I don't know, you just don't just give them taking all. taking a couple of, you know, extra bills and stuffing them in your bra. Yeah, exactly. Right, but I mean still you could just like not give them some of the gold. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, here's everything I got. They'd be like, Cool, thanks. Yes, that's true. But I mean, like there's probably like other, I mean, there, you know, like there's other people around. They might notice if you. Well, yeah, but you got, I mean, you've got to pay your crew. Mm hmm. I don't know. I, I'm not, nor have ever been, nor will probably ever be a pirate from the 17th century. So, yeah, me neither. I mean, kinda, not out of. Kind of missed out on that opportunity. Yeah. I mean, it was really just existing. because of timing of being yeah, born. Right. I, I don't have anything against it, per se. Well, maybe Captain Kidd was just the type that was like, you know what, I'm not going to just dip my toe in this. It's like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go like all in. He's ball deep or just the tip. Or no, not, not yeah. even just the tip. It's either ball deep or no deep. Yeah. So, I imagine maybe that was his uh line of thinking like just if you're if you're, if you're gonna go for it just, just fucking go for it that's right well how about you uh go for it joanna i will go for it so as you may or may not have known once again talking about aliens you know government officials gathering to discuss the existence of aliens and alien to seriously discuss and to yeah seriously and of discussed. course yeah seriously not just like be like this is just a bunch of you know tomfoolery and this you know aliens aren't real and just being dull dismissive of it it's just like no like people that have access to that information are speaking and like the government is listening and talking about like hey what should we like do about this not really in, you know like about the fact that like aliens exist but like i think the key takeaway here was just like the transparency issue um that our government, you know, like the the military needs to be a little bit more transparent about what exactly is going on with the alien situation as it stands. Yeah, that was that was the main takeaway that I got from it. So my uh, sources are NBCNews.com, an article written by Michael Mitsanis on July 26, 2023, and also a Newsweek.com article uh, by Tom Norton on 8-4-23. Summarize, a House Oversight Subcommittee was held on the existence of UFOs. And there were three former military officials that uh, testified at this hearing. And they basically said that, yeah, like, uh, there's a whole lot 
more going on with UFOs and aliens than the general public is being made aware of. Weird. <laughs> I know. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, David Grush, a former U.S. intelligence officer, told the panel that he's absolutely certain that the federal government is in possession of UAPs or UFOs. Uh, and that basically we've had them for a while and that we're trying, you know, we have them and we're trying to like, you know, copy the technology. Reverse engineer. Yes. Reverse engineer the technology. And, uh, yeah. And that, uh, especially when it comes to like Navy pilots, um, like there is encounters like all the time. It's not an unusual thing. (laughs) They're like, oh, it's another one. Yeah, there's another one. And his big thing was kind of like, you know, these reports need to be taken seriously. And uh, there shouldn't be like a stigma attached when uh, reporting on the UAPs. And then the information should be flowing freely from the sighting uh, to whoever they reported to. And then down to the... American people, essentially. And this guy, David Grunch, he was kind of, you know, I mean, he said a lot, but also didn't, you know, kind of held (laughs) back a lot, citing that, you know, there was, like, you know, issues with, like, stuff being classified. So he's kind of a whistleblower, but also he's like, I'm going to blow the whistle, but only, like, so much. He doesn't want to get court-martialed or fucking, like, thrown in prison or shot in the back of the head. Yeah. Um, I think that was one thing he mentioned was that American people have lost their lives in order to protect this information. So, yeah. yeah. That that was one thing he... Fucks up with that. uh Uh-huh, yeah. And, and like, that's, like, not cool. Um, I don't don't think he approves of that. Oh, a whole lot. Yeah. So there's that. There's the issue of um, the biologic material, which was found in some of these UFOs. I can't call them UAPs. It just doesn't roll off the tongue. So UAP, UFO. That's fine. That's fine. Everyone knows what Biologic you're about. material, like that's in, that's in the quotes there, was recovered at some of these, um, in some of these UAPs or UFOs. And then when questioned further, like, well, was it alien biologic material? He preferred to classify it as non-human. Non-human, which to me, I I mean, that's a little annoying because non-human could mean a lot of things. Like, was there a fucking cow in there? I mean, a Uh. cow is a non-human. Or are we talking, like, something that was not from this planet, as in alien biological, biologic material? Yeah, like extraterrestrial. Yeah, the the most he would go for was non-human. Hey, I mean, maybe they can't call it, they can't refer to it as extraterrestrial or whatever, but, I mean, or maybe that there's, like, animal mutants that the government's been working with to fly things and so yeah like, i mean that i almost maybe i'm like what's going on with that <laughs> are there actually teenage mutant ninja turtles out there right yeah so the whole like you know okay non-human so non-human biologic material found in some of these ufos which our government is trying to reverse engineer and uh the general takeaway of it is like yeah this is going on and i think like the american people deserve full disclosure and by the way these aren't like isolated instant incidents um navy pilots yeah (laughs) report this kind of stuff, like, all the time. Like, the, you know, there, there's, there's activity. There's, there's quite a bit of activity going on. Yeah. Now, one thing that's weird is, like, out on social media, okay, so I did not really tune in to the whole thing that was on video. 
I watched some of it at my work because they had it like on the, like you know whatever like CNN or whatever channel they were like C-SPAN. streaming it on. And then I was like, well, I'm going to look for some more information. And then out out there on Twitter, on social media is like a clip of a guy who is like reading like a letter from actual aliens. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hold up here. First off, we have to call it X. Otherwise, rich, rich boy is going to get sad. I was just, I mean, because it went from like, you know, this one guy, this, the, the, the David guy was the guy who like talks like the most, the former intelligence officer. And it kind of goes from this. And then like there's this old guy and he's like reading something like from the aliens about like how our world is in danger. I'm like, wait a second. Did this happen at the fucking uh, <laughs> at the thing? And this Twitter post did make it seem as if uh, that was what was going on. But if you have seen it, that did not actually happen at this oversight committee hearing. OK, <laughs> <laughs> So, did a little fact checking on it, or rather, uh, did a Google search and Newsweek fact checked it for me because I'm like, was this like a thing that actually happened at the hearing, or what am I seeing here? Because it was very weird. It was very weird. Like this, this guy, this older gentleman's like kind of like reading as if like this is like some communication he had with an alien <laughs> himself, and like you know, <laughs> it was very odd. Um, <laughs> it was it went something along the lines of your air, your water are contaminated. Your forests, jungles, trees, and plant life are dying. There are several breaks in your food chain. You have an overwhelming amount of nuclear and biological weapons, which include nuclear and biological contamination. Your planet is overpopulated. And basically, if you don't start taking steps, like, I mean, we're going to be in, like, a world of shit. And so, like, I'm suddenly freaking out. I mean, it's not <laughs> like we don't already know this information. Right. But I'm like, okay, like, the aliens are really, like, trying to, like, warn us. Like, they, they wrote out, like, a letter in English. <laughs> <laughs> Like, how, how do they like, do that? <laughs> I know. And, like, listed all these things. And, like, they're, it's like, I mean, if the aliens are really, like, getting to this point where it's like, hey, uh, Earthlings, you need to pay the fuck attention, you know, like, pay attention to this fucking shit. Uh, you are in deep shit. Then, I don't know. That, that would kind of worry me more than, like, all, like, you know, like, the human scientists and stuff who've been trying to say this for decades. But... I don't know. Right. <laughs> I mean, there was something about the fact that, like, suddenly the aliens were on board and also agreeing with everything that was just like, well, shit. You know? <laughs> I guess we really are fucked. This is not good. Okay. Well, so, no, that did not actually happen at the recent hearings. <laughs> <laughs> what that clip showed was uh, a gentleman who's. Name was Paul Hellyer, and he is a former Canadian Minister of Defense. And so, I mean, you know, he has some credentials behind him, obviously. Uh, but he did die, like, in 2021. So, you know. He wasn't the last one. Right. the one that just happened was after that. Right. And what he was reading was some excerpts from a book about um it was like a collection of alleged encounters and communications with alien life oh, um, yeah. from a book that was written in 2006 called the keepers an alien message for the human race by jim sparks so apparently jim sparks feels as though he has gotten communication from aliens in regards right. to like how our planet is a you show. know uh-huh essentially uh, I mean, and I mean, hey, that's back in 2006. I can't even imagine. Like, I mean, like, what would the aliens have to say to Jim Sparks today? Like, uh. you didn't listen. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> 12 years or 20, whatever, like a long time ago. Like, uh, Jesus, math is 18 hard. 18 years ago? Uh, yeah, something like that. 2006. 17. Yeah. A whole person who 17. can drive. Jesus Christ. 
Yeah. That's horrible. That's horrible. That's 2006, 17 years ago. I don't, I don't like that one bit. So he's reading a passage from this book written by Jim Sparks, and he is reading this in 2011. And yes, there were six former members of Congress were sitting there listening to him reading this um, transcript, essentially. Um, But they were former members of Congress and had been paid $20,000 each to sit and listen. (laughs) (laughs) To uh, what this guy had to say. I would sit and listen to some fucking jack offs telling me anything for twenty thousand dollars. Dude, yeah, hell yeah. I mean, you can Apparently say whatever the fuck you want. Bullshit for twenty thousand yeah. bucks. I mean, I will literally take days of my life for that. Like, I mean, it doesn't even have to be something short. Like, be like, hey, you got to do it for like seven full days and nights. I'd be like, I'm on it. You know. Uh, I'm not signing up for that. You can do that one. You wouldn't do a week of listening to stuff for $20,000? Seven full days and nights? Well, yeah. I mean, it's $20,000. You just sleep and they just keep talking to you? Well, yeah. Just, uh, Uh, you know. What happens if you have to go to the bathroom? Well, do you... uh, Shit right in front of them? (laughs) I mean, I don't think they did that at the actual uh, oversight committee Well, it probably wasn't seven days They'd probably take a break, all right? We got to probably like pause for a break here yeah they all are all they they are all very old so yes so i'm sure there's plenty of potty breaks all right every 10 to 15 minutes probably Mm -hmm. yeah now we're gonna break for uh another you know potty sesh and yeah we will resume in 15 to 20 minutes i mean Probably yeah. happens a lot. It happens enough. So it could have been seven full days and nights just with all the bathroom breaks. It could have easily been, which is why I would sign the fuck up for it. I mean, obviously like I was exaggerating a little bit, you know, <laughs> for dramatic effects. But, like, thanks for calling me on it, and I still stand by what I said. All right? Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah. That little clip that is out there circulating on YouTube and the uh, Twitterverse, or, I mean, is it X now? Is that what you were saying earlier? It's it's X now, yeah. It's X. That's stupid. I'm sorry. Yeah, and Rich Boy gets sad if people call it X. If people people don't call it X, and by Rich Boy you mean like that, the Tesla guy, the what's-his-fuck, Elon Musk. And apparently he'll dead name his kids, but he won't. He gets mad when people call X, Twitter, say so, you no, know, whatever. He's out of touch with reality anyway. He's a fucking billionaire. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'd say so. And I'm sorry, like Twitter has always been Twitter, and it's really hard to not call it that and to call it X. I mean, that's dumb. Okay. What are tweets called now? X's. Yeah. This is fucking stupid. Across? Did he? Did he cross on X? <laughs> I don't. I don't fucking know. I'm not clear if he knows. Uh, I don't think he does. I mean, it was one thing to go from Musical.ly to TikTok, but Twitter has been around for a really fucking long time, and so uh, calling it X is just, that's going to be a hard transition, I think. I wish him the best. I'm just, yeah. (laughs) And I I really don't give a fuck if he gets mad or not, because... Yeah, fair enough. I I don't either. He can, he can just fuck right off. He can just fuck right off. He's too busy training to fight Mark Zuckerberg anyway, so... Oh my gosh. That was just like... I mean, talk about, like, the stupidest fucking shit ever. Fucking white people, am I right? (laughs) Right? Rich white people, okay? (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) So, yeah, if you happen to see the letter from the aliens warning us of our imminent demise, um, that was not part of what actually just happened, which was a little bit more like, oh, hey, I'm a guy who probably knows quite a bit about what i'm talking about and uh it's there it's it's happening but no one wants to admit to it and we really should more yeah it didn't go just from that to like oh and by the way here is a letter that the aliens wrote (laughs) right (laughs) we're fucked to whom it may concern (laughs) you're overpopulated your forests and rivers they are contaminated Soon you will be dead. Yeah. So that that's that's kind of like my little whatever on the um, on the hearing about the aliens. Yeah. The 
Once again, you know, not surprised. I mean, okay, yeah, they exist. Yeah, like, tell They're me something I don't know. The government's the hiding it and not releasing information about it. Yeah, They're shocker. Weird. Doesn't sound like something they would do. I know. Like, our <laughs> government, they've always been so transparent with us in the yeah, past. Straightforward. I know. Trustworthy. Yes. Yeah. Shocking. Absolutely. Shocking. Absolutely. Absolutely shocking. I'm just glad that, like, the, the, the letter from the aliens, I mean, maybe they really did write to this guy, Jim Sparks. I don't know. Maybe. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little glad that that wasn't actually, like, part of what seemed to be kind of, like, a legit thing going on. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like if, if there was actual, like, live aliens contacting, like, government officials... And it was all. It would be a much bigger thing than just like, yeah. Oh, we're having a hearing on aliens. It'd be like, no, we fucking they contacted us and like, be yo, here in a few weeks. like we're in big trouble. Okay, like they actually called us about this, and yeah. uh... <laughs> so we have to do all those things that they said that we they should be doing. Didn't even send a text. They actually like picked up the phone and like yeah. called. So you know it's got to be like urgent. Called urgent. everyone. All of the heads, yes. all of the heads of government. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, shall we move on to otters? Otters, <laughs> straight up otter time. Straight up otter time, but we're not yet at the the time of the otters because no, that but straight up otter yet. time. That, is that's in the future. Straight up otter otter time is a song by the Goth Sickles. Oh, okay. Which gives real, true facts about otters. In a smooth industrial tone. Okay, well, so if I'm anyone not wants to listen to it, you should, about go, the to, Gothicles, you should go to Spotify and listen to Straight Up Otter Time by the Gothicles. Okay, well, it sounds informative, at least. It is informative. There's a whole album about uh, animals. About otters? With, no. Oh, it's about okay. animals okay. with all real facts about oh, the animals. Oh, interesting. That's an interesting take on music. Hey. Let's just sing the facts not, out. That's not what they only do, but. Okay. That was just some of the songs. It was, I mean, everyone needs to learn about animals, and so why not yeah. with a smooth industrial, smooth industrial music background? Are you sure it's not like clanky it's just, industrial? It's not clanky. He doesn't okay. clank very much. Not, not very much. Aid. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from. CBSnews.com article by Eliza Chazen, and this was August 3rd, 2023. So you see, I mean, I've kept this all pretty recent and relevant, all right? Yeah, so what? So what if I read an article from 2015? Go fuck yourself, <laughs> Joanna. <laughs> Whatever. An otter wounded, wounded three women in a, quote, rare attack. Wednesday night, as the victims floated on an inner tube on inner tubes in a Montana river, official said. So they're just sitting there floating in in the river on on some inner tubes, minding their own business. When there was an otter attack, the women were watching an otter or two in the Jefferson River when one approached and attacked. The Montana Department of Fish and Wildlife and Parks said. The women managed to get out of the water, and the otter swam away. The victims called 911 for help, authorities said. All three needed medical treatment, including one woman who was airlifted to a hospital in a helicopter. Uh, otters are no joke. They are. I mean, I'm just like Jesus fucking predators. Christ! Like, They're what not, happened? They're not like itty bitty little ferret sized things. They they got some heft to them. They will fuck you up. I just I mean, ne- didn't realize otters were could be like vicious, are vicious like that as fuck otters are vicious as fuck they're just so cute though he's like eating stuff like, off their little tummies they're like a water cat <laughs> but bigger and they you know don't take no shit and apparently can fuck you up because i don't know of anybody who's they had can... to call 911 over a cat attack like i a actually domestic do cat. i oh, do, do you uh well maybe they you didn't tell call 911. i want to hear about a cat attack to a hospital. Yeah, they got mauled by a cat. They, this cat destroyed their fucking arm. And uh Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, so, I know they're well incapable of doing that, but I mean, you just don't usually see a cat going like all out on somebody. Like not you know. usually, but sometimes they just fucking freak out. This one just fucking did. And you see videos sometimes of like 
people try to kick some cat and it launches itself at their face and then just uh-huh. proceeds to tear their fucking face apart. Oh, yeah. I mean... They are apex predators. They just happen to only weigh up to, like, you know, 10 or 15 pounds. <laughs> so it's not that big of a deal, you know? Yeah, I mean, you could usually pry them off and throw them. I mean, it, oh, yeah, I I mean a cat can fuck off. you up. But, I mean, as far as, like, being it's immediately, like, airlifted to a you. hospital, like, I mean, yeah. that's, that's pretty... If you're... If you're someplace, uh, if you're someplace crazy, then any sort of attack, you got to get airlifted. Yeah, I mean, Montana does have some, you know, pretty big open uh, remote they're, areas, I would say. They're on the inner so. tube, so, you know, they could well be in just some fucking weird place that they just couldn't drive an ambulance to. So they had to get a uh, uh, helicopter out there. Yeah, it just seems like a lot. Like, that's, a, like, a lot of, like, wounds to, like, be having, um, you know, to actually have to, like, be airlifted into the hospital. That's not just kind of, like, uh, superficial wounds there. Like, that seems, like, a pretty pretty serious. Officials did not give any specific details about the injuries, only saying that the woman who, the woman who was airlifted suffered injuries that were, quote, more serious, end quote. The Montana Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Parks said also, quote, while attacks from otters are rare, otters can be protective of, of themselves and their young, especially at close distances. Close distances. Yeah. That's just, like, <laughs> that's a weird... <laughs> Whatever. It is kind of weird. They give birth, <laughs> yeah. They give birth to their young in April and can later be seen with their young in the water during the summer. They may also be protective of food resources, especially when those resources are scarce, end quote. So it could be, like, maybe they, they were out swimming with their kids, and uh, then these ladies are just chilling on this inner tube, and they're like, hey. This fuck is you. our time. This is, yeah, you. This is our time. This is the time of the otter. It is starting right now, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Officials have posted signs at several fishing access sites in the area warning people of the otter activity. If an otter attacks, fight back, get out of the water, and seek medical attention. Uh, Officials are not planning any action to catch the otter. Yeah, I mean, it's a fucking It's a fucking otter, otter, okay? It's it's not like a cougar. It's not a bear. bear. It's not going to, (laughs) like, stalk campsites. It's gonna, right. like, attack people who come by in their stupid fucking inner tubes if it's out with its young or whatever. It's a fucking otter. Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, an otter that caused one person to be airlifted to the hospital, though. Yeah. I would be upset. I mean, otters are really cute. I would be really upset if they were like, oh, yeah, we're gonna fucking, like, catch the otter and euthanize it. I'd be like, that sucks. Humans, like, are basically outclassed by any animal out there. Yeah. Because all we have is a brain, but we don't have any weapons or armor built into us really at all. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, otters should have the right to, like, you know, be happy in their river and taking care of their young. I I still love otters. I mean, I might not be less... I mean, I'd be less inclined now to want to pet one if I saw it in the Oh, wild. I would want to pet one? Jesus Christ. <gasps> I would want to pet it. They're so cute. I mean, yeah. Except for the rabies thing. It's like, I don't know if they carry rabies. I have a thing with rabies. So probably I wouldn't, but I'd really want to. But now I would probably, like, maybe even keep more of a distance. Like, I I probably, in actuality, would not pet an otter if one was nearby. But I might put more distance between myself and the otter. Um, Yeah, I'm not going to try to pet any Having read this uh, now. Yeah. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want to pet it, but I probably would want to, like, you know, get a little closer to it, snap a pig. But now, now I'm probably going to be like, okay, hey, I see you, Otter. Like, let me, let me give you some more space. Yeah, yeah. A wider berth than normal. Yes, yes. And I, I would recommend that anyone listening do the same, because apparently... Uh, to wild uh, animals in general. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just but I, I just, you know, otters, I'm just, I'm shocked. I just, I don't think I've ever heard of an otter attack before. I'm just... Well, I just uh, love seeing them at the zoo, and they're just like the cutest thing. They're like my favorite. That's. Uh, but I mean, I guess like don't like let that like a lot of cute you. things that they can actually. Yeah, I mean, kittens are cute too, but you know, 
they're just little baby apex predators. That's so. true. I mean, that only grow to be, you know, not that not that big. Yes. Oh, I love kittens. And I love Me it too. when they're trying to be, like, fierce and stuff. Fierce. Like, that's the best. Oh, uh, we had some uh, a mama raccoon come through our backyard with baby raccoons. And I went out there with a squirt gun. And it was like, get the fuck out of here. Because they try and, like, nest under our house. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the babies stood on its, on, high, on its hind legs and waved its arms above itself in front of me. And so I squirted it. Uh-huh. It, well, it's, it's water, so it was just like... Right, yeah. It didn't really care that much, but it was really cute. It scared a couple of them. A couple of them bailed through holes in the deck. But uh, the, the one was just like, no, fuck you. And it got like, a squirt ha, ha, ha. for its efforts. It's almost like it was like teasing you a little bit. Like, neener, neener, neener. I'm going to wave my hands at you. No, I was trying to be big. It's like, I'm huge. Yeah, I'm big. Fucking Don't squirt. fuck with me. Yeah. I don't know. I still say maybe it was mocking you a little bit, but that's just that's just my opinion. <laughs> so is that all you got then? That is all I got. All right. For well, you uh, fine folks today. Thank you all very much for listening. We uh, very much appreciate it. Uh, you can find us at Facebook if you want to li- pay if you want to go to our uh, group, the Strange Space. We don't really do anything there, but hey, join. It's fun. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want a very a quiet group. Things. <laughs> that are yeah be part of nothing it'll be great wonderful yeah. um you can go to ageofradio.org that's the podcast syndicate we're a part of uh there you can find us at ageofradio.org slash stranger than where you can stream our episodes if you'd like you, you can, can also, also our... find other podcasts to stream at age of radio they have a whole yes. variety of them tons there so. are many uh, you can also join our Patreon, patreon.com slash stranger than podcast, where for one dollar a month you just give us a dollar a month, and that's lovely of you, and we love you for it. Uh, for two dollars a month, you get ad free regular episodes, and for five dollars a month, you get in addition to your ad free regular episodes, a bonus true crime episode where Joanna tells you terrible stories. I do. That are just, just with the shitty people. Mm hmm. And usually some dead people that may or may not have been shitty. Right. But they're dead. Yes. Yes, there's there's lots of that involved. But it's it's a great time, you know? It's a jolly old time. <laughs> and with that, we'll talk to you next time. And stay strange. <laughs>